Hello and welcome back to another turn of The Great Crisis of Frederick II by uh, VUCA Simulations. So before I actually jump into the turn though, I'm going to point out that I made a correction. I think I caught this in the previous video, but I made a mistake in that when it was the winter turn and I was going through the, the spending action points for the Prussians, I spent one point to flip two of these depleted units back to their full strength side, and that is not a legal move because these units are actually in an area that is not controlled by Prussia. And because that area is not controlled by Prussia, I could not spend that action point to flip those depleted units back to their full strength side. So what I did is I simply flipped those back to their depleted side and, and stacked them with the other three units that suffered from winter depletion. So now we have a grand total of five depleted units in this stack. There's still, I think, two, yeah, two uh, uh, full strength units and the leader here. So really three full strength units and five depleted units now. And technically what should have happened is the one, the two that were depleted should have stayed depleted and they should have rolled separately for their uh, winter depletion to see if they survived or not. But I'm gonna let that slide. I did flip them back, so we're gonna go with that. And I think that's it. So with that said, I'm gonna reach over and grab the chit cup that I have. And you'll remember that in the chit cup, we now have two Prussian chits, two Austrian chits, uh, one French chit, and of course that game in a uh, game turn in marker, <laughs> which we saw come out uh, first thing last time. So I'm gonna shake these up. And let's see what we get. And hopefully the Austrians uh, will get to take a turn. Let's see. I'm going to reach in here and grab a marker if I can fill one. I'm going to grab it. And it is, well, look at that. It is Austria. So I set the cup over here. I'm going to put the Austrian marker on the turn track so that we you know we have pulled that. And the Austrians will finally get to take a turn. And if you will remember, the first thing that happens is they will roll a d6 to see how many action points they get. And unlike the Prussians, they do not get to add plus two to this. It's just simply what they roll. And they may have a card in their hand that might let them add some more points. So let's see what they get. We will roll the d6. And I dropped it in the floor. So let's roll the d6. And they get two. So, and you'll note too also that I moved the dice tower to the middle of the battle board because it's a little hard to see. It's, the setup here isn't so great camera wise. So I just want to make sure that you can see the dice results as they come out as I do. So that's why that's a little different. Now, let me look at the Austrian players. Let me flip you back here to the main battle board. Let's look at the Austrian players cards in their hand they might be able to use and so yeah they have the rapid advance card which will give them plus two action points and certainly they're going to want to use this because they just rolled the two this will give them two more for a grand total of four the other card is rapid mobilization that's not going to do a heck of a lot of good here so they will play this plus two action point for the phase card. We'll put that over here in the discard pile. And we will, first thing we will do is you'll note that the Austrians have retreated twice. So they're already in the hole for two action points. So we will bring, we'll pay for those two. That'll reset that. And then we'll give them their two additional action points. So not so great for the Austrians here because they only have two action points to spend total. So what are the Austrians going to do? And I'm going to reach over and grab the uh, the phases here that we go through just so we, we make sure that we're doing this right. So we first check for the line of communications network. And I didn't do that. I went right into determining the action point because I don't. I still think that everyone on the board right now is is still within their lines of communication. These guys are actually in that fort. They're okay, same with these. So everybody else seems to be in line of communication. We rolled for the action points. Now they can recover and march their forces. They can recover depleted. 
Now, I don't think they can recover the depleted unit that's under siege here. Even if they could, I don't think they'd want to anyway. Uh, so what do they want to do? Well, I think they might want to start moving some of their larger forces. And over here, they might want to... Actually might want to think about uh, moving, advancing onto this fort. And I think there are... Let's see a leader in here, but it looks like there's three, four, it's like there's seven. Looks like there's seven units there. Well, if you so something has happened to um Piccolomini, it looks like. Was is he in this stack? Did I overlook him? I don't see him. They should have, there should have been a leader in this deck. So there's one, two, three, and then there's seven units. And I know what happened. Uh, we He got removed. He was the leader. And like I said, it was dark. It, the lighting in here is a little better today. It's not like it was last time. And I couldn't really read that leader. But that's who it is. He's over here on the, the commander reserve track because the Prussians played a card, I think it was, that allowed them to remove a leader. And that's exactly what they did. So this stack is currently without their leader. They are there are seven units here, so that might change things just a little bit. There are three units here. We reinforced this during the winter turn, and there's a leader down here. Not a very good one though. He's a his tactical rating is a zero, and there are seven units there. Well, and then of course over here we have another. Stack. I think that's the full a full stack of eight. And their leader Brown has a tactical rating of two. And there's another leader here, which I think we deployed a little in the winter turn. It's also a two. Now we could think about maybe moving th these this force north to try to help with what's going on with this siege up here. And that may not be a bad idea because they do have the Prussians do have five depleted units. And Frederick is sitting right over here. And one of the things you want to do if you're in the Austrian alliance is get take out Frederick, because that would pretty much hand you the game, I believe. So let's see. Interesting. We have two action points. So it would cost one to move here. And we would have to pay... Um, would we have to pay an additional action point to move into Dresden. Now it is in our control, so it's in our control, but it is under siege. So I'm not sure if we'd have to pay that extra action point or not. I think we probably would since it is under siege. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure that's right. It would cost us two action points to move Brown to Dresden, and that would be our only move. But that's an interesting Interesting, interesting idea. Um, it will, it, no matter what happens, though, it will expose them to uh, Frederick and his stack over here. Basically, it's boiling down to, do I want to move Brown to Dresden, or do I want to move some units to one of these Prussian areas over here, maybe kind of sweep up around this way? Hmm. Well, really tempted to take Brown north. Like I said, that's... Uh, The Prussians really kind of got bogged down here in Dresden, and they're pretty ripe for an attack with having those five depleted units. And there's already a Prussian, I mean, an Austrian leader, really Saxony, but um, Rotowski, if I'm seeing that properly. And he's a 1 8, Brown's a 2 8, so he's the better leader. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight. So there's nine units basically here and seven units. So they would be outnumbered. Yeah, so you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to spend both of those action points and march into Dresden to try to try to um, stop the siege that is going on. Let's do it. So 
what I'm going to do is spend one action point to move this stack. Let's see if I can grab it with my new handy dandy tweezers here. So basically, I'm paying one action point to move one space, and then I'm paying the additional point to move on into Dresden. So there we go. So now Brown has marched his troops north to relieve that siege going on at Dresden. That is both of the action points for the Austrian army. And that's all they can do. So recovers and moves. Well, we didn't recover. We did move. We marched. And then we go right into fight battles. And so what that is going to mean is I've got to move the battle marker to Dresden and move the units to the battle board. So I will do that and give me a second. I will uh, get that set up and we'll come right back. All right, so no, actually, before we do that, uh, looking at the rules, and when we actually get to initiating combat, it says battles take place after conducting all marches if, A, no new units enter the space with an ongoing siege, which is what's happening here, facing player can spend one action point to initiate the fort battle, regardless of whether he is the attacker or the defender. You, one or more units just entered an enemy space in the march phase. Um... This also applies to a space with an ongoing siege. All right, so this is a little clear in the um, updated revised rules for the initiating a battle. So battles take place after concluding all marches if no new units entered. So basically, if we had an ongoing siege, I didn't march these units into that space. I could have spent uh, an action point to continue the siege there, to continue the attack. But according to part B, one or more units just entered an enemy space in the march phase, which we did. This also applies in a space with an ongoing siege. This negates the extra one. Okay, so yeah, so this is definitely okay. I say definitely, <laughs> I think it is. So let me get the, um, let me transfer the units over to the battle map and we will get started. Okay, so those units are on the board. And what I did, I put the Prussians out on this attacker side because technically they're, they're still the attacker. They, they initiated this siege. Um, so just so you're not confused, the, the Austrians are actually coming in to uh, help, you know, these besieged units from these Prussians. So that's why they're in the attacker space. Also note that the leader here, the Prussian leader, can only give his bonus to four units. So one, two, three, four. Uh, these other units, I've put them down below because they were, are not able to get that bonus. Same thing up for the Austrian. This uh, leader, Brown, is able to give his bonus to eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The other leader that was already on the space uh, will not get that bonus. He's just kind of sitting out here too. Uh, it is a unit, he can still participate in battle. Uh, it's just that Brown's tactical rating, uh, he basically he's the leader of this battle, if you will. So what we will do, and of course this one unit I put our left in the fort um, is still, and I think I might have done that wrong. So I'm looking back over at Dresden. Dresden is actually a size, I'm sorry, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a resource fort. So two units could be in the fort. So we're going to say those two units we're still in the fort. They were already in the fort. And so now we have Brown coming in with his troops to try to help them. So um, the defender, let's see, let's get our charts out here again, my little cheat sheet. So the we do the field battle first. And the thing I'm, I'm pausing over is the attacker defender again. Um, and I believe, or just, or I, we're gonna, I guess it would be Austria would really be the attacker. So I got confused myself. I probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> so, um, so that's gonna mean that the Prussians will get to, to fire first. Um, so let's do that. And 
I'm looking at the steps that you take, and you, we need to check the tactics, tactic cards, to to see if there's any that uh, that either side wants to play. And let's do that now. So I'm going to flip back to the main board so we can do that. We will come over here and grab the. Well, they only have one card for the. We only have one card for the Austrians, and that was a. Um, this is basically uh, allowing the player to. It's rapid mobilization that allows the player to bring units out of the board. So they certainly cannot use that card. The Prussians have a fistful of cards. They have five. Cavalry charge, rapid advance. Uh, another rapid advance. I really can't use. Those two flanking maneuver, um, two flanking maneuvers. That's not going to do them any good either because that's for forest and wetlands, and there's none of that here. So, all right. Well, that's no tactics cards. We're just going to go right into the battle. So, like I said, really the the Prussians are going to get to fire first because they are they are the defending force. For now, so let's see. Let's grab a bunch of D6. I'm going to flip us back to the battle board so we can see what's going on here. And so, what this means is that the Prussian leader can give well, really only three. I really only need three D6. <laughs> I grabbed all of them. May need those in a second, though. Uh, the reason I need three is because these depleted units can't do anything. They're depleted, so they don't get to fire. That's why Brown ran up here. He knew that the time was now to strike. So there will be a plus one to the roll, though, because uh, this Prussian leader, and I, I'm having a hard time seeing him. I think it's Bevern, it looks like. I can't really. It's tiny print, and my eyes are horrible. He gets to add one to the rolls, so they need six to hit, and I'm going to roll three, and that's a horrible, horrible roll. <laughs> so that is a complete miss for the Prussians. Oops, and I'm knocking the dice tower around, so let's get that back in alignment. And now the Austrians will get to attack. So we have Brown has a tactical rating of two, and I believe this applies to everybody here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, he can uh, he can use that uh, plus two for all eight of those units. So let's do that. So have I got it here? I do have eight, so let's roll them and see how these Austrians do. That looks like, well, that's plus two, so I will pull out the hits. So there's, well, that was a six. Let's put that back. So there's a six, a six, another six, a five. So those certainly all hit. And these fours hit too, because four plus two is a six. And I flip that over too. Not used to these new tweezers yet, apparently. All right, so that is a grand total of six hits. And I believe, let's see, I believe that the um, Austrian player, or I'm sorry, not the Prussian player, is going to have to take these six hits. So, yikes. So I think we're going to apply three of those hits to the full strength units. Um, let's, oops, let's do that. I'm having a hard time today. So there's one, two, three, and then we're going to eliminate four, five, and six. So that's six hits. And when you eliminate units, 
they will go back to the unit reserve, uh, their full strength side. So let's put those back. We will go back to the battle board. And so, looks like the Austrians are getting some revenge here. And I'm just going to move these dice out of the dice tower for now. So that was the Austrians' turn, and now we go back to the Prussians. So the Prussians, they, they can now choose to stand and fight or retreat. Well, they, they, if they stand and fight, they're not going to get to do a whole lot. In fact, they're not going to get to do anything because they're all depleted. So I think they're going to have to retreat here. I think that's probably the smart thing to do. What that means, let me uh, switch cameras back here. So they're going to retreat. That's going to cost an action point, if you'll remember. And they're going to have to retreat back to a space they control. So I think probably the smartest move would be to retreat uh, back towards the north here. Because there are some resource spaces here, and that kind of keeps them near Frederick. So I think we're going to do that. I think we're going to spend the action point. And what that means is we find the Prussian... Um, let's see, we find that Prussian marker, if I can, if I can find it. And I think I, I think I had it right on top there and was just going right over it. So they're going to have to spend an action point. That's going to put them on the negative one marker. So they spend that one action point and these one, two, three, four, five, these five um, units will now retreat. So they're going to retreat back up to uh, Torgal here. So let's do that. And they're still depleted. So we'll just grab them one at a time. Oh, he wants to undeplete, but he can't. We will grab those and they will retreat, turn tail and run. And what that means is now we can um, we can end this battle. I will move the uh, active battle marker back to the the battle map, and I will return the Austrian units back to the board. So give me one second to do that. All right. So those Austrian units have actually managed to rush up to Dresden and save those besieged units. They forced the Prussians to retreat. This is a stack of eight units, and we still have the depleted unit, and we have uh, this leader, uh, Rutowski, still in Dresden. So, so we did the fights battle, fights battles, there are no more. Uh, remove recovery markers from units. There are no um, recovery markers to remove. Mark control of spaces. Well, no, they held on to dress and they didn't take any spaces other than, well, they didn't take any spaces. They just took back Dresden or prevented Dresden from falling, really, is what they did. And then check if they may draw tactics cards. Absolutely not. Um, all they did was prevent Dresden from falling. So, well, they did win a field battle, though, so hang on a minute. Let me grab the, uh, the cheat sheet because they did win a field battle. And I think that qualifies them for a tactics card. The active player can draw one card for each space or where one of these things happened. Took control of an enemy fort or resource base. No. Relieved a siege. So, yes. And won a field battle. So, they really uh, completed two of the conditions. Sadly, though, it was all in Dresden, so they can only do one. Just only draw one card per space. But they will get to do that. So, I will draw... Well, do they do it now? I think they do. We're, we're at the end of the... Uh, um, yes, we're at the end of their... Their, their phase here, so they will get to draw a tactics card, and let's see what they get. It is another rapid mobilization card, um, and this will let them do just that. 
before a march or in uh, step one of a winter turn. So we'll put that aside and that will do it for Austria. Um, that was their turn. And then we will end it here. Um, I'm going to, for now, I'm going to uh, do another, uh, have one army go and then end it. Um, I think that may change in the future because this game, if I don't speed things up a little bit, could go well into December and we don't want that. I've got a ton of stuff stacked up to get on the game table and on the virtual table and tabletop simulator. Um, I do like to play these games and I haven't had very good luck on some of these games, but I do like to play these games to the end if I can. And if you think maybe that's too much, let me know down below in the comments. Uh, if you don't, think I ought to play an entire game. Maybe if you want to see more variety, more um, different types of board games on the table and would rather see just a couple of turns to get a feel for how to play, I can do that too. I'm open to suggestion. I don't have to play these to the end, but that's the way I'm doing it for now. Uh, let me know your thoughts and I will take that into consideration. So yeah, come back and we will draw another chip from the cup and see who gets to go next. Things are getting interesting. I didn't think Dresden was going to be uh, able to hold on like that, but they did. And so I'm not sure it's going to be, you know, this sort of the chip pull is kind of neat in this game because it's, you know, if the Austrians get another chip, uh, even if the French come out, there's a French chip in there. So if the Austrians, if the Austrian alliance gets to go again, they get a pretty good opportunity to put some pressure on the Prussians. Uh, then again, if the Prussians draw uh, their chit, and then draw their chit again. <laughs> they, they might be able to put even more pressure on the Austrian alliance. So, fun game, fun game. So, please come back and see what happens. I think it's going to be interesting. I think you're going to see more stuff like this happen where the unexpected may occur. As always, thank you for watching. Um, if you uh, enjoy what I do, like, subscribe, and uh, again, give me feedback. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if you like seeing me play these games to the end, or if you just think you want to see a couple of turns of a game and then we'll move on to another one.